This is Kathy from Gadgets Top 321, and in today's video, I'm going to take a look at another one of the inks from my Ferris Wheel Press ink charger set. They come in this little cardboard sleeve with the magnetic closure, and the ink I'm looking at today is Lady Rose. It came in this little glass vial. I had to put the ink from the little vial in a sample vial. You can see the difference in size between these two, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. I'll do a writing sample on 52 GSM Tomoe River paper, then I'll take a look at some writing samples that I've already done on copy paper and Rhodia and Leuchterm. I'll look at some inks from my collection that are comparable to Lady Rose. And finally, I'll take a look at the results of the water resistance test. Ferris Wheel Press Lady Rose came off the nib of my glass dip pen pretty nicely on this Tomoe River paper, but the writing sample that I did on Rhodia with my dip pen was very dry and unpleasant. The swatch that I did with my tweezers was very crisp, but there's not much range between light and dark in the swatch. The little drip at the end of the swatch doesn't have any sheen, but there's a little halo of darker ink. I normally begin my writing sample with the finer nibs and work my way toward the wider nibs, but today I'm going to begin with my Jinhao X750. It has a 1.5 stainless steel stub nib. The stub nib was fairly smooth and it didn't feel too dry. That's why I wanted to begin with this one. I wanted to begin with something that worked pretty well with this ink. This is a very watery ink and a lot of the nibs feel dry. It feels like you're writing with no ink at all. Next I'll be writing with the Caveco Lily Put. It has a stainless steel broad nib. Again, this broad nib feels dry. It feels like there's no ink at all in the pen, but because there's so much tipping and it's such a smooth nib, it's actually pretty pleasant. It's, it's not uncomfortable to write with, and it looks good. Next, I'll be writing with a Pilot Pluminix. It has a stainless steel cursive medium nib. This one feels pretty dry, and it actually is. This nib is actually somewhat of a dry writer, and so the ink just looks too pale. Next, I've got a Sailor 1911 Standard. It has a 14 karat medium nib. Again, this one feels dry, and I'll talk about it a little more later. This has been my favorite nib to use with this ink on a lot of the writing samples, and I'm kind of surprised on this Tomoe River. I'm just not very fond of it. It, If you have a Sailor medium nib, if you take it out and write with it on Tomoe River without any ink, that's what it feels like. Next, I'll be writing with a Pilot Custom 74. It also has a 14 karat medium nib. This 
This nib also feels a little more dry than usual, but the Pilot Medium nibs are quite a bit smoother than the Sailor Medium nibs. So this felt better to write with, but to me it just looks horrible. It's splotchy and the Sailor looks better, but it was just unpleasant to write with. Next, I'll be writing with a Ototache pocket pen. It has a stainless steel fine nib. Okay, I only have room to write dry here. You can see by the ink smears, it's not really dry. You've got a decent amount of ink smearing here, but it just feels dry in each of these writing samples. This Ototashi looks nice, and I just noticed that this nib is kind of stubby. The downstrokes are quite a bit wider than the side strokes, so it looks good, but it was just a little unpleasant to write with. Next, I'll be writing with my Twisby Mini. It has a stainless steel fine nib. Again, this nib just feels dry. Normally, this nib feels glassy smooth, but uh, with this ink, it is just very unpleasant. It looks dry, it looks pale, and it feels very dry. I saved this pen for last. It has a extra fine nib. It's a Pilot 78G, and it is such an extra fine nib that it has just been so unpleasant to use in these writing samples. I stuck with it. I'm glad I did. It didn't actually feel bad here. It was just, I'll put, it was okay. It felt dry. It wasn't really scratchy, but there's no legibility to this ink. So still, it's not something, it's not an ink I would use in this Pilot Extra Fine. I'm going to set this to the side just a minute while I look at the other writing samples. On my Rhodia paper, the reason I wanted to show that today, and on one of my swatches, I hadn't cleaned the tweezers well enough. It was contaminated, but you can see there is a, a decent range on the Rhodia paper between dark and light. This was the first writing sample that I did. In fact, with all my inks, the first writing sample that I do is on this Rhodia paper, and usually the writing sample that I do with my glass dip pen up here at the top, you know, sometimes it feels a little dry. This was just very unpleasant. It just didn't want to grab the paper. I kept having to turn the nib to get it, to, um, the ink to grab the paper. So it got off to a bad start with the dip pen. But the main reason I wanted to show this was because on Rhodia paper, I actually enjoyed my Sailor 1911. There was a decent amount of feedback, but it was mostly just audible feedback. You could really hear it, but it put down such a nice uniform line. There was some shading in places, but on the Custom 74 with that really, with the smoother nib, you can see in some places the shading is just more splotchy, and I'm just not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of the way it looks. Um, so in the Sailor 1911, and I have a feeling my Platinum 14 karat medium nib, it usually performs better with these kind of watery inks, these dry watery inks. On 20 pound copy paper, the ink ends up looking kind of grainy because again, it's so watery. It just soaks into the paper really quickly. 
It's not very saturated, so it looks pretty grainy. The letters are a little bit ragged. You can see where the, the ink has spread. The Sailor 1911 was the only... Actually, the Sailor 1911 and the Pilot Custom 74 felt okay to write with on this paper, but you can see the Custom 74 it looks kind of splotchy. And the Sailor 1911, the letters just look kind of ragged. Here's the Ferris Wheel Press Lady Rose, and it bled through the paper on all of the nib sizes. The wider nibs worse than the finer nibs, but it is, it's a watery ink that just really soaks into the paper really quickly. It feels almost like writing with a magic marker, but this ink is unique enough that it, it doesn't really look like a magic marker. I have to say, I still, I think I wouldn't mind writing with the Sailor 1911. It doesn't look too bad. I wanted to talk about the writing sample that I did in my Loitch term, just because it felt so significantly different from the other writing samples. Loitch term has a tendency to make some inks really bring out the chalky feeling of them, and this one, it was really pronounced. Um, a lot of the inks felt dry, or a lot of the nibs felt dry, but there were some like the Caveco Lily Put and the Stub Nib, the Custom 74, nibs that usually feel very smooth, either velvety smooth or glassy smooth, on with this ink felt kind of chalky. And it wasn't unpleasant. It was an enjoyable feeling, but all the other nibs felt dry and unpleasant. I also want to mention that I think this ink looks good on off-white papers. I don't have many inks that are similar to Ferris Wheel Press Lady Rose. I've got Sailor Ink Studio 252, which is, it really makes the Lady Rose look kind of peachy. But it, they're both those kind of pale, unsaturated inks. I've got Sailor Shikiori Yozakura, and I thought they would be closer than they are. It really, the pink of the Yozakura really makes the Lady Rose look almost orange. The Yozakura next to it looks more of a brighter pink. But out of these type of inks, instead of these pale, undersaturated inks that don't perform that well in certain papers with certain nibs, I prefer the Van Diemen's Rhubarb Crumble. It's not like these inks, I know, but this is the type of ink that I would prefer to use instead of one of these. Ferris Wheel Press Lady Rose is not water resistant, but surprisingly, the ink that remained is legible. Even in the Twisby Mini that was wrote pretty dry, there is a water resistant component to this ink, not much of it, but enough that you can read what's left. Okay, the writing sample that I did on Tomoe River paper was kind of a disappointment. Let's see. There was no bleed through, very little show through, but the only pins that were pleasant to use were the wider nibs. The others felt pretty dry, and even my Pilot Custom 74 didn't feel bad, but I just see how splotchy it is. I'm not fond of that. The Caveco, I guess my favorite on Tomoe River paper is the Caveco Broad. It looks good, it's very legible, and it was pleasant to write with. Everything else was disappointing. Okay, I wanted to mention that these little ink charger sets, they are so cute. The little magnetic closure box that they come in, it's such a neat idea, but from the get-go, getting one out 
like you can't get a hold of it. You have to get your fingernail in there to get it out. So that's a little bit of a hassle. The only nibs that will fit down in here to ink up a pen are only like Pilot number no. five size nibs. And even, I take that back, the number no. five size nib on my Custom 74 does not fit in here. The nib on my Sailor 1911 Standard, which is the smaller Sailor nib, does not fit in here. The Sailor LeCool nib from a previous writing sample doesn't fit into this. Only the tiniest nibs will fit into this. So I was going to pour it into a sample vial, and when I went to pour it, this particular ink was so dry, I turned it completely upside down, and the ink was just stuck in there like ketchup in a bottle. I had to shake it and shake it and shake it to get it to come out into this sample vial. So, and you can see how big this opening is. So I can imagine that if ink gets stuck in an opening that wide, it's going to get stuck in a converter. And if you're not using a converter or a cartridge that has a little ink agitator in it to keep the surface tension broken, it's probably going to be an issue with the ink flow in your pen. Now, I've had to deal with this before. I have Van S White Lightning that you can add to the ink, but when you do that, that's going to make it feather and soak into paper and spread out even more. So unless you're using fountain pen friendly paper, like really high quality paper, you don't really have the option to add a lubricant to the ink. This is just a, oh, it's one of those inks where you really have to be mindful of what pen you're using and what paper you're going to be using. I guess this, this is a nice ink for uh, signing a card or maybe writing a little thank you note. I don't know how I would feel about writing an entire letter with this. I'm glad I've got a sample of it, but this isn't a type of ink that I would buy a whole bottle of. All right, if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.